is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom shall I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. Today's Mass is being celebrated for the special intentions of Cecile Drury and for the special intentions of Pauline Fanning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we come together to celebrate this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask of God's mercy and pardon. We apologize to God as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Kings. King Ahab summoned all the Israelites and assembled the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. Elijah then came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping with two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets number 450. Let two bulls be given to us. Let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood. But put no fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood. But put no fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire is indeed God. All the people answered, Well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose for yourselves one bull and prepare it first, for you are many. Then call call on the name of your God, but put no fire to it. So they took the bull that was given to them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, crying, O Baal, answer us. But there was no voice and no answer. They limped about the altar that they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, surely he is a god. Either he is meditating, or he has wandered away, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep and must be awakened. Then they cried aloud, and and, as was their custom, they cut themselves with swords and lances until the blood gushed out over them. As midday passed, They raved on until the time of the offering of the oblation. But there was no voice, no answer, and no response. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him. First he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Then he made a trench around the altar, large enough to contain two measures of seed. Next he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and laid it on the wood. He said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Then he said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. So that the water ran all around 
the altar and filled the trench also with water. At the time of the offering of the oblation, the prophet Elijah came near and said, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your bidding. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and even licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord indeed is God. The Lord indeed is God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows, their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. I keep the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Teach me your paths, my God, and lead me in your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, what, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Why do people tend to view the law of God as something that is negative rather than something that is positive, right? It always has this undertone of God being oppressive, lots of rules and regulations to follow. But if we take a look at what the law of God is, for Jews, they would say that it would be the Ten Commandments or perhaps the Torah, the first five books of the Pentateuch of the Bible, the first five books which instruct God's laws and to kind of put them into practice. But for the Jewish people waiting for a Messiah to come and abolish the law, I think perhaps their biggest concern was scribal law. The scribes added a bunch of extra laws and rules and regulations and, and things that people had to follow. So much so that Jesus often called them out on it. You know, you make up these laws, yet you yourselves don't follow them. He often called them hypocrites for it. But God's law is good. God's law helps us to live a good life and to, and to stay on the straight and narrow, to do the best we can, to live in harmony with each other. I think it can be summed up nicely in Psalm 119. We hear this, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. God's law is not meant to oppress, but rather God's law is meant to just help us live a good life in communion with our brothers and sisters. Take, for instance, the Ten Commandments, right? Seems like common sense. Seems that way. Pretty normal things that help us live in harmony with each other. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't kill. Maybe you shouldn't steal stuff. Maybe you shouldn't uh, take another person's wife or husband. Maybe you shouldn't be nasty to your parents. You should honor them. Like, all of those things make sense. You should put God first. We should keep his day holy, right? If, if all of society did this, 
right? I think, I think our world would be a much better place. Check out how Jesus ends the gospel. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. That's, I think the important part is whoever teaches those to break them or lessens them, right? Like, we can try justifying all we want that, oh, you don't, you don't have to keep holy the Lord's day. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Better a millstone be wrapped around their neck, right? Not good. We cannot diminish that law. Because actually, the law is not there just because God wants to dictate. But the law is there to, to keep us in communion with him and with each other. To help our society live. In fact, most, in most countries, laws are sort of based upon that. Right? So his law is not oppressive. But it is meant to be something to help guide us. It's funny, I've had some, some good conversations with people who will often say, boy, I thought my parents were strict when I was growing up, but am I ever glad they had the rules they had? I'm a better person for it. I think we can apply that to the same thing. Like, like everybody wanted Jesus to abolish those laws. He comes not to abolish, but to fulfill. Like, here I am. All those laws come out of love, and I am love, right? The Father, in his goodness and out of his love, sent me into the world. Here I am. These laws are based in love. Perhaps we can too be able to look back and say, you know what? Maybe God was strict. Maybe the rules were a bit much. Maybe. But I'm a better person for it. May God bless you all. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, as with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people, as we walk in your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Alphonsus Liguri, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Ecce Agnus Dei, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to do what is right, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.